So what I'm doing this morning is I'm in the mangroves and I'm looking for some tucker. Big school of mullet cruising through this channel. I'm gonna try and get close. He's just not in a good way. That's a perfect bit of tucker. This will be beautiful in the coals of the fire or I could even just eat it raw. I'll be camping on this island tonight and I didn't bring much food or gear with me at all. In fact, all I've got is this three piece hand spear. I figured we might do a bit of a traditional style hunt, forage and cook up today using only some limited resources. And what I'm hoping will be on the menu is mullet. They school up in the shallows here. Stingray, but I want to cook it up the way the indigenous did and see if it tastes a bit better than when I've tried it before. So the tide's currently coming up right now. I've got my knife and hopefully we can find a bit of tucker to cook up this afternoon. Let's have a look, eh? Have a go at this. I've already collected myself a generous pile of oysters on this rotten branch that I just knocked off right here. This will be beautiful, either in the coals of the fire or I could even just eat it raw. That's a perfect bit of tucker off the bat. I'll leave that right there. We'll grab that on the way back, hey? Let's see what else we can find out here. Little mud crab claw right here. I don't see a lot of mud crabs in these sandy mangroves, but they definitely can be around here. On very large tides up in here, you can get all sorts of creatures. I've even seen quite big sharks, big turtles, dugons. Everything cruises up into the shallows, looking for food, there's warmer water. You get lots of big fish and things like that. So we've got ourselves a bit of a medium tide this morning, uh, but that should bring in a fair few stingrays and, and fish and maybe even some mud crabs, things like that. Believe it or not, these stingrays have been around for longer than the dinosaurs. And although they carry a very dangerous barb on their tail, only five deaths have been reported in Australia since 1945, including the legend Steve Irwin. So as long as you watch your step, you should be right. Big school of mullet cruising through this channel. I'm gonna try and get close and get a shot on. They're good eating size. And the water's really deep. I need him to cruise on this side. I've just popped out to this beautiful open part of the mangroves here, full of nice white sand. Now all these holes indicate to me that this is a pretty good spot for stingrays. I see some bubbles up here that may indicate that a stingray's burying himself and camouflaging from me. So if he's a good size, we'll whack him. Oh! Got him! I got him. I just gotta be real careful how I approach this. The barb could easily get me at the end of the spear here. Oh, I just got Got him again. I actually got him again over here and he's pulled my spear out again. It was a tough angle to grab the spear there right next to his bar, but what I need to do was lift it up and shove it down and make sure I get the prongs right in, but just didn't get a chance to do that. I saw he only had one little tip of the barb in, so he was just pulling the spear along and it just dislodged really easily, which means he'll be all right but I'll be hungry. Yeah. A little sand crab. Oh.
Man, these stingrays are hard to get. It's been a few hours, surprisingly. Haven't been able to find another stingray, so I'm gonna head back to the boat because that tide's dropping out and I'll be stranded for the whole day if I don't get going. So unless I find a stingray between here and the boat, I think we're going hungry. Well, that sucks. <laughs> that was potentially our last shot. <coughs> we got a stingray, guys. The boat's just over there. What did I say? If we find one between the boat and us, then we've got a feed. I've got a nice stingray right here. What I do next is crucial, though got the stingray on the spear but I've got my toe on the oysters so what I got to do now is a traditional method that the indigenous people actually use to get the barb out so you can dispatch this the stingray uh, humanely without getting done so we're gonna do that now and that right there is the deadly barb of a stingray. All right, we got him. If this is another turtle rescue, guys. That's my boat. That's my camp. And that's a turtle. Oh no. Something's wrong with him, so I'm just gonna take him to my boat where it's a bit easier to manage. I reckon he's eating a plastic bag or something, eh? You right, buddy? You don't look too well. He feels pretty soft. As you can see, he's just sitting down here. Um, completely just docile. Not really looking in a good way. No boats have hit his shell or anything, so I reckon this poor bloke might have a stomach full of plastic or something like that. But it just goes to show always something going on with these poor turtles, man. All right, buddy. Um, I'm currently just waiting for the sun to go down to do my cook up for the video. So I might take him on the sup back over to camp. I'll whack him in the shade and I might see if I can get some reception and call the ranger down here. They should be able to access the beach. Um, they might be able to pick him up and do something with him, but there's not really much I can do. But he's alive. He's just not in a good way. If you are calling regarding swooping birds, including magpies, please hang up and contact your local government or council. Oh, sorry, buddy. For crocodile incidents. This is getting ridiculous. To report cassowary sightings or incidents. Dude, what? Including sick or injured cassowaries. No, cassowaries. Turtle. This is marine. Koalas, we're getting closer. To report a marine animal stranding, including whales, dolphins, seals, or marine turtles, press four. Four. No, no signs of a tag. I'll escalate that report through now. Awesome, thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Wait. Alright, local authorities are called. You just gotta hold in there, buddy. Help's coming. You just rest, alright? So many turtles I come across out here. Fishing line wrapped around them, upside down on the beach. Like a whole heap of gnarly stuff. This is the fourth turtle I've found now in the last couple of years. Um, and I film all the adventures I do, so that's why I've captured it all on camera. But um, yeah, this guy's looking more crooked than the others, so hopefully he pulls through. I don't know if that's gonna be annoying him or not, but just try to keep the sun off him and wait till the rangers cruise past and hopefully they, they'll know what to do. And we can um, get you back out in the water, hey buddy. Dude, all good. Good luck, buddy. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. So here it is, the barb of the stingray. It's a pretty big one, and this barb has backwards facing barbs all the way down it. So when that goes into your foot or your hand, 
trying to pull it back out just causes so much more damage as it rips through the skin and on top of that it's got a poison which has an incredible sting so you really don't want to catch yourself standing on a stingray or getting smacked up by one of these the indigenous australians would put these on spears and you can even use it to cut up the belly which we're going to do right now but just because this probably has poison on it i'll use my knife here and what i'm going to do is extract the liver out of the stingray throw the other guts out and then it'll be ready to go on the coals And that right there is the liver of the stingray, a prized possession and a delicacy in many parts of the world, quite overlooked in Australia. Uh, we don't really eat stingrays, but the indigenous Australians have been eating these guys for thousands of years. But there's a poisonous part up in here that we need to extract first. I hope I've removed that correctly and we're just left with that. Righto. That sun's setting now, coals are looking good. For entree, I'm gonna throw our oyster stack on the fire here and see how it goes. Right in there. Now, my great granddad actually was an oyster shucker, oyster farmer, and um, he told me once that if you put anything on your oysters, you don't really like oysters. So I've always had them as is, raw, whatever you want to call it. But I thought, why not try it on the campfire since we're doing that with the stingray as well. So I'm looking forward to it. Look at that. That is, I can't believe I haven't done this before. Look at the size of that one. Righto, stingray in the coals. There's nothing else to do, we just flip that. When it's cooked on one side, flip it again. And then I'll show you guys the special key. Campfire cooked oysters are one of my new favorite things to eat in the world. Cool thing about the stingray is you don't need tongs. You can just flip it with the tail. I'm gonna chuck him in there a little bit more, a bit hotter. It smells good. Throw that on the fire there. Now let me show you what we got to do with the meat to make it taste really good. Righto, so what we got to do now is scrape the meat off the stingray and put it in this bowl here. Now stingray has cartilage between its flaps, so we're gonna have to flip this and do it on the other side too, as much as I can. Make sure this big fella doesn't go to any waste. Look at that. I've just washed my hands. And here's where it gets interesting, guys. We've got a bowl full of stingray meat. I'm gonna grab this piece of raw liver. I'm gonna squeeze it up in my hand here. And then I'm gonna squish it into the meat. I'm getting a really smoky flavor at the moment, but it's probably just those delicious oysters burning off behind me. But what it starts to look like is just a big ball of stingray meat. So here we go. I'm gonna give it a try. Raw liver, stingray meat. That tastes exactly like crayfish.
That's incredible. Yeah, crayfish. Yum. That is good. There we go. Right, uh, honest verdict. I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to say, the oysters are better. I'm a fiend for oysters, like that's, that's good. But stingray, that's the best method I've ever cooked it. How the indigenous Australians cooked it back in the day is the only way I'll cook it from now on. That was, that was fantastic. There we go. I know there's a good one here. Let's see the juices. Jackpot, baby. Look at that. Righto. You'll only really know what this tastes like if you go out and do it yourself. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful creature. Tastes unreal. I can't wait to finish this off and watch the stars come out. I'll see you in the next one. Mm.